The communication conundrum of our focus today is hecklers. So it's not uncommon for you to be giving a talk or a speech and getting heckled. Disruption from the audience. So that can be anything from having, you know, latecomers walk in to your talk as you're already in the middle of things. It can be people who are on their phones and chatting. They think quietly, but still it's such a distraction because as the speaker, you are looking to see what's going on in the room. So it can be people who are causing disruptions as you're speaking. It can be people who get up and walk out and leave the room and not in a quiet way because, okay, there are situations where we do need to take a bio break and we excuse ourselves or we don't, but there's a way to do that quietly. But sometimes it's not done that way and it causes a disruption for the speaker. Now, as a speaker, that can completely throw you off guard and it can really impede your thinking and what comes next in your speech. So we don't want that to happen. Instead, we want to make sure that you are prepared in the event that you'll get heckled. And it happens. It's not that, you know, the audience is doing it out of malice. They're not trying to sabotage your talk, but it's more of a matter of a disregard for the speaker and not really knowing what goes on with a public speaking event. They probably have never given a speech themselves before, or if they have, then they've probably gotten heckled and they think that's the way to go about things. But the idea here is to deal with the hecklers. So we're going to look at strategies that are going to help you deal with this communication conundrum were it to arise. So instead of placing the blame on the audience saying that, oh, they were so bored, they must have been so tired, they, 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 complaining about the audience. Instead, what do we do? We first have to shift the responsibility onto us. So we assume responsibility for that communication conundrum, the fact that it didn't turn out the way we were hoping it to, right? Because you got heckled. Now, we're absolutely not condoning their poor manners, their lack of etiquette when it comes to listening to a talk, right? But we have to remember that it's our responsibility and it's within our control to excel in giving a talk. If we are doing everything to the best we know how, then we don't have to worry about the other people, right? So we're going to look at ways of now assuming responsibility and what those strategies mean. The success of your communication is within your control. So as you see, the simple mindset shift from blaming the audience, saying that they were unfocused, bored, not engaged, blaming them for their behavior. Instead, you're saying, okay, how can I do better? Maybe the delivery was subpar. Maybe the content wasn't their cup of tea. Maybe I didn't research enough about their interests. That is a very different dialogue, right? A different conversation that you're going to have after the communication conundrum so that you can prevent future communication conundrums such as this from happening. And that's what we're here to do, right? And shifting the focus from them to you is a much more constructive way of taking the next steps in your communication journey so that you can progress as a communicator, as a public speaker. Let's get right into it. The first strategy, get audience feedback and figure out what went wrong. You can do this by going out and asking people in the audience their honest feedback. You can ask the audience to submit some anonymous written feedback, or perhaps you've planned in advance and you have some sort of printout or worksheet that you can provide them and ask at the end of your talk to just spend three minutes, five minutes to anonymously fill out a survey or just to write their thoughts about your speech, right? And by doing it anonymously, it takes the pressure off of them to pretend like they enjoyed it when you know you got heckled and you could see the disengaged audience so that 
you know that they actually were not engaged, right? So you can ask for written feedback or oral feedback at the end. So what does this feedback look like? Well, you should be asking questions about the content. Was the content of interest to you? You can also look into the delivery, something about the space that you were in, thinking about the actual setting. Was there enough space for you to move around or was it a static sort of situation? Was the AC on? It could be even a little thing as the temperature in the room, right? But sometimes just that little thing makes a world of difference, not only for you as a speaker, but also the audience. Perhaps there was no entertainment factor in your speech and there was no levity. And maybe the audience would have really enjoyed some humor in that speech. So by asking such questions, you will gain so much insight into what went wrong and how you can make it better for the future, for future talks. Feedback is very powerful in this way. The constructive criticism is welcomed. We want to improve, but we won't be able to do that if we don't have the data points off of which we can base our starting point, right? And it's a journey. So don't be overwhelmed by perhaps getting a lot of feedback. Ultimately, we want the feedback, but there's a way of approaching it that's not going to be overwhelming. So just take it easy. Look at the ones that are maybe the most blaring to you. So if it's something about the content, that's very important. If, if the message is not resonating with your audience, then what's the point, right? So we have to be mindful of prioritizing the types of feedback we receive. Of course, we can't focus on everything at once, but have some perspective and look at the ones that you can take action on now and the ones that are really, really important, right? So perhaps content, delivery, style, and then adding humor and then adding, you know, some sort of flair, maybe visual aids. But first it comes down to the content, the message. Okay. So be mindful of the perspective there. Strategy number two, carving out more time. You probably have heard me say this before, but practice is so important, right? Just with anything else. You're learning how to play the piano. You got to carve out time to practice. You want to learn how to do Taekwondo. You got to go to lessons. You got to practice. It's the same with public speaking, right? So you might feel like just reading off of your paper or knowing the subject of your talk is enough. Hate to break it to you, but it's not. Why is that? Because you haven't practiced your talk with the proper expressions, verbal and nonverbal, with the body language, with the pacing, with adding pause. Speaking to an audience is different from speaking to a group of people in a coffee shop, right? We have to remember adding pause in our speech so that the audience can grasp the concept. So adding in the elements that we like to use in public speaking, the various techniques that we've discussed in different videos is really important to practice all together. It's not enough to Look at a paper with your outline and just rehearse it in your head. We can't do that. Not if we want a really good outcome in the talk. Not if we want the audience to find value in what we're sharing with them. Because ultimately, it's about them. It's not about you. It's about being able to convey a topic or share an idea that really resonates with them and gets them thinking and inspired and a call to action that's there, okay? So it's about how you can add value in their lives. Just remember, public speaking is a live performance. And as a performance, there's so many things that you have to consider when you want to be able to effectively convey a message to the audience. So practicing is one thing, but it's not enough to just read off the paper. Like I said, when you're practicing your talk, you want to act as if you're giving the talk then and there. Imagine there being an audience, make eye contact with the invisible people in the room, right? And it sounds silly and it sounds like, oh, I don't need to do that. I'll remember, 
day of. It doesn't work that way. If we don't visualize the scenario and don't practice it and treat it as a real performance when we're practicing, you cannot expect yourself then to be able to do it day of if you have not practiced it up until then. Okay. So I really encourage you carve out time in your busy schedules and practice it the way you would perform it. Tip number three, gather as much information as you can on your audience. It's really important and it's something that gets overlooked. But you know what? If you don't know who your audience is, how are you supposed to connect with them? Right? So think about and learn. Do the research. Find out what their interests are. Find out their age group. Find out their sociocultural backgrounds. Is this a group of international business people? Is it a group of exchange students? Is it a group of people from one specific country? You have to do the work, right? It's not enough to just give a great speech. What does that even mean? I mean, you have to add the information you know about the audience so that you can give a powerful speech that resonates with them. Okay, so learning as much intel as you can about that audience. This is easier if you are giving a talk to people in your company or giving a talk to people in your group or association or club or even class because you already have some understanding as to who they are and what makes them tick. But if you're invited to speak somewhere, then ask, figure out who these people are. It'll make for a more powerful connection and ultimately speech. And by doing so, your audience will be able to identify with you and connect with your message. Tip number four, getting some professional feedback, professional advice. Now we can all benefit from getting another opinion. You know, when you go shopping and you really like a dress that you've tried on, it's always great to get another opinion from a trusted source, right? Because sometimes we might be biased towards the colors or the cut, but we don't know if it really suits us. So it doesn't hurt to ask our best friend or our mom or our spouse if they also like the dress, right? So it's similar with public speaking, with your talk. Let's say you've practiced it, right? You've carved out the time, you've practiced it in the way that you wanna present your talk and you've incorporated as many techniques as you can think of, sometimes it's really, really helpful to get feedback on what we've done and where the gaps are because they will have a professional opinion about things that you can do even better or in a different way or some ideas as to how to maybe bridge the gap or maybe of figuring out what makes your audience tick and having your message resonate with your audience. Corrective feedback is a marvelous way of getting to the next level. Corrective feedback is the feedback that we get that is constructive and that we have direction on, right? It's not just saying, oh, it was good. I liked it. Or I don't know what it was. I wasn't crazy about it. You know, that's stuff that people are going to tell you, your friends, your family, and that's fine. That's valuable. But if you really want to be serious about your talk and get to the next level in, in your public speaking, then it wouldn't hurt to seek out advice from a coach, a communications professor, somebody who has experience in the field, and also the ability to give good feedback. That is how we grow, right? So when you take this quality feedback and you apply it to your talk in a targeted and constructive way, it can make a world of difference and you'll actually see and feel the progress, right? So it's not out of the question to seek out professional coaching advice. Let's quickly recap before we go. The communication conundrum that we're discussing today in this video is getting heckled during a speech, any type of disruption from the audience or the venue, primarily the audience, that interferes with your ability to give the speech. This can be as simple and generic as 
audience disengagement. So you see that the audience is distracted, disengaged, and thus leaving the room or on their phones or chatting with people next to them and ultimately not listening. So what do you do? Well, the solution is the strategies we discussed in this video. So we have getting audience feedback, practicing your talk like you would perform it, researching your audience, figuring out what makes them tick, and seeking out quality feedback. All right, Explorers, that's it for this video. Remember, this is the first installment of the five-part mini-series about strategies that we can use to deal with communication conundrums. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, be sure to give us a like. It means so much to us. If you're new around here, we're thrilled that you could join us for this video. And be sure to subscribe so that you can join us for all the videos to come to help you communicate with confidence, authenticity, and poise. I'll see you in the next video. Happy exploring.